Yeah, I will just repeat what we have done in yesterday's class. In the yesterday's class, I started with model number five, in which I told you first a little brief introduction to what is computer networks. I said that if there are more than one computer connected to each other, it is called as a network. The network can be as simple as two computers having a cable between them. Why do we need networking? Is to share the data between the computers. The biggest network is the internet. It is a network of networks. It's the biggest network. There are computers connected to the internet. One which is maybe in India, the other one maybe in the US. So you can imagine how big this network is. And then I can share data from one computer to the other computer. So I told you that is a network. Then I explained to you a brief introduction to what is HTTP. HTTP is a protocol. What is a protocol? A protocol is a set of rules and regulations that has to be followed. And HTTP is an application layer protocol which is used on the internet for transferring hypertext documents. HTML document or any other type of a document, you know, we use HTTP protocol. There are some rules and regulations of this HTTP protocol. Then after that, we wrote our first program using Python. We wrote our first program using Python. Uh, the program was to uh, implement a simple browser. You all know what is the meaning of a browser. A browser is uh, something in which you have to type the URL and then the browser will get that page for you. So we did the same thing yesterday in the yesterday's class. We uh, wrote a program. You can see this program. First of all, we imported socket and then we created an object of the socket class socket dot socket. We created an object by passing two parameters here socket afi net and socket sock string. These two things are compulsory to be given when you create a socket. AFI net decides what type of internet addressing you are using, and sock string decides what type of string you are using. So, for your simplicity, just assume and go ahead that right now, okay, if you don't want to really break your head on what are these two arguments, just go ahead and think that these are the two things that has to be always mentioned when you create a socket. Then, after that, when you want to connect to the server, you have to mention uh, the name of the server and the port the port of the server. The first parameter to the connect function, the connect function of my socket takes two parameters. First is the server and second is the port. Server, you can, you can either uh, specify here the name of the server or you can specify the IP address of the server. And the second parameter is the port, the port which is open on the server from where you can take this data. So that port has to be mentioned here. And remember that the server data.pr4e.org is a server which is there in the US. The server may be in the US because we have a it is on the cloud. It is on the cloud. And uh, yesterday we fetched one text file from the server. The name of the text file was romeo.txt. Now this file is there on that server and the server is on. Okay, just mind it that the server is on. Its port number 80 is open. That's the reason why your program was able to connect to the server and pull the information from there. So connect function takes two parameters, the name of the server and the port. And then after that, you write a command. If you want to send a request to the server, you have to send the request in this fashion only. You have to say get, you have to say get, get what? Get romeo.txt, romeo.txt. You have to specify the complete path, HTTP, data, PR, all that you have to specify. Get romeo.txt from this server using HTTP 1.0 and then two blank lines you have to pass. This is the format of sending a request. HTTP always requires you to send the request in this fashion, in this format. Then to send this command, to send this request to the server, we use mysocket.send function and then we pass the command. Command is this command that we have put it into this variable. Then once the request goes to the server, now the server will reply back to you. It will send you back the details. It will send it back to you. And then now you have to uh, read this data. It is coming from the server. The server is actually sending you back the data. It is sending you back the text file. So you have to read it. To read it, we take a while loop. While true, my socket dot receive 512 bytes. So first read 512 bytes from the server and keep it into data. Check the length of the data. If it is less than one, which means that the data is over, there is nothing in the data. Then you can break. Come Break means break will break out of the while loop. So if data is less than one, that means data is finished, come out. Otherwise, otherwise, print, print.
print the, the data. Print the, the data. That's it. This is my program. Print the data. But when I print the data, remember that the data is coming in the form of binary. I need to change it to string. The data is in the form of binary. It is in the form of bytes. I have to change it to string. So that's why I do data dot decode. Decode function will convert bytes to string and then it will display it. So find them. I mean, we have seen the output of this also yesterday. And this is the uh, explanation for that program. Okay. So you can just go through that and you will understand. Next is retrieving an image. Today's class, I will be explaining to you retrieving an image from HTTP. The concept of the program is the same. I will first explain to you the logic and the concept of the program. And then later on, we will see the execution of the program. Uh, the concept of fetching image from the server is the same. Yesterday, what we did, we fetched text data, Romeo.txt. Now today, what we are going to fetch is uh, an image from the server. And the image which we are actually fetching from the server is this. You can see that there is a URL here. We are fetching this image in our Python program from the same server, data.pr4e.org slash cover3.jpg. Now this is the image that we are fetching, pulling from the server, and then we are saving it on our hard disk. We are saving it on our hard disk. We are saving it on our hard disk. Pulling it from the server and saving it on our hard disk. Okay, this is what we are planning to do. The concept is the same. Create a socket, give the host name. Host name is nothing but the server name. Give the port. Port is 80. And then after that, uh, um, uh, call the function. Call the function um, my socket dot send all. Yesterday, what we did was we did uh, my socket dot send. We did my socket dot send. So there are two ways how you can request the URL. There are two ways how you can request data from the server by using the send function or you can use the send all function. You can see there is a send all function also. Okay. So we uh, call the uh, request the data from the server by calling mysocket.send by passing the entire URL, by passing the entire request here. You know how the request is. First, what you say is you say get, get, get what? Uh, get uh, cover.jpg from this server using HTTP 1.0 and then two blank lines you put it. You put two blank lines. So this is how we request. Once the request goes, now you know immediately after that the server will start sending you the data. Whether it is simple text or whether it is an image, it will start sending you the data. Okay. Once it starts sending you the data, now you have to keep receiving it. You have to keep receiving it. Now remember yesterday's thing was that the data what was coming was in the form, it was a text data, it was string data. But today what data is coming back from the server? It is an image. The data that is coming back from the server is an image. So you have to first read these as in the form of bytes. Whether it is string data, whether it is video data, whether it is audio data, whether it is an image data, remember it is all in the form of binary zeros and ones only. So read it in the form of zeros and ones, read, read it in the form of bytes. Keep storing it into a variable. Keep storing it into a variable. And then finally, once all the data has come back from the server, convert that into an image and store it. The idea is that. That is the only difference between yesterday's program and today's program. Yesterday's program, we read everything in the form of byte and then we converted that to string by using the decode method. Now today, the data that is coming is in the form of binary bytes, but it is an image. So we have to keep reading this data and keep dumping it into a variable. As and when the data is coming, please take it and put it into a variable. Keep putting the data into the variable. Keep accumulating it there. Keep accumulating it in that variable. And then finally, and then finally, you save it as .jpg, and then you will be able to see the entire output. Now let us see. Let us see how this goes. Okay. So first, I'll start from the beginning. You know that I need uh, import socket. Okay, for making connection and then requesting the data. Then after that, yeah, I'm also using time. I'm also using time here. Why this time is required it's not required for pulling the data from the server but this is only to show uh, step by step that data is coming for that you know if they're using time otherwise this time is definitely not required okay i will remove this from my program after i execute this and then i will show you what is the difference between with the time and without time okay but remember time is not required so i import socket time and then after that i declare two variables host and port i declare two variables host and port what do I keep into post? I keep the name of the server into post variable and then I keep the port 80 into the port variable. Then after that, I create 
the socket how to create the socket we know my socket is equal to socket dot socket into bracket we pass af inet and socket stream then my socket dot connect i have to pass two parameters here i have to pass the host host is the name of the server which is already put into the variable host comma port i put at here okay so i can directly write this entire thing over here type it here or i can uh, put it into a variable and then write the variable name here it is one and the same okay next after that how to request the data from the server i simply write my socket dot send all and then i write the command over here okay uh, yesterday's program and today's program if you compare when i call my socket dot send when i call my socket dot send you, you can see it here uh, my socket dot send i pass the command and what is this command you can see the command is get or that is correct field here then i write dot encode i write okay i write dot encode if the decode function converts byte to string if the decode method converts byte to string what will the encode function do the encode method will convert string to byte the convert the encode method will convert string to byte so i when i when i call the command you know i have to convert that command into bytes in the form of binary so that's why i encode it i write all this i write dot encode so what goes into command the binary format of this command the binary format of this command goes into command so that's why i do encode here and then i put it into command and then i call the binary command through the send function what i am doing here is a little different same thing only but a little different i say my circuit dot send instead of writing dot encode here what i do is i write b here in python if you want to declare a binary variable or if you want to convert something to binary you prefix that string with a b small b you prefix that with a small b so you say b then single quotes you write from here to here from here to here write the single quotes from here to here you write the single quote and then whatever is after the b will be converted into binary you can see it here also i am declaring a variable here you can see this picture okay you can see this picture here picture is equals to b and double quotes so you are declaring a variable picture you are declaring a variable picture okay which is which is a binary it is in it is a string basically but in binary format because you have prefixed it with a small b here so similarly here also you can see that my command is from here to here and it is prefixed with a b i want this binary so what i can either remove this b and write dot encode here i can remove this b and write here dot encode or i can write b here and write the command here i hope this is clear so my socket dot send this is my command and then the moment i do this the request goes to the server and the server will start sending me back the data so before i start receiving the data what i do is i declare a variable count which is equals to 0 it's a simple integer variable i initialize it to 0 and then i declare a variable picture why am i declaring this is because as and when the byte data is coming from the server i am going to put it into picture i am going to put it into picture i am going to collect that data and keep putting it into this variable picture and then finally convert this picture into an image and store it into my hard disk so that's why i declare a variable called as picture here i declare a integer variable called as count and then i take the while loop while true same thing what we did yesterday we have to keep reading the data from the server as long as the server is sending you the data the moment server stops sending you the data that means it is the end of the data so while true receive uh, receive see how many bytes we received yesterday we received 512 but today we are receiving how many bytes 5120 5120 bytes at a time we are receiving so this number is remember this number is variable if you want one byte to come at a time you can write one there if you want 10 bytes to come at a time then you can write 10 there How you require like that? You can read. So I am reading 5,120 bytes at a time, putting it into data. Now I check data. Is it less than one? If it is less than one, it means that the server has finished sending the data. If the length of the data is less than one, break. Break means come out of the loop because server has stopped sending you the data and you should stop reading. If it is not less than one, if it is greater than one, then sleep for 0.25 seconds. quarter second sleep for quarter second 0.25 seconds and then after that after that you know what you do take the length of the data and put it into count basically what you have in count is what is the length of the data how many bytes have come how many bytes have come how many bytes of data has come that you are accumulating into count count is equals to count plus length of data is nothing but whatever data has come added to count and put it back into count so 
whenever you have a statement like this, count is equals to count plus cent of theta, it means that you are accumulating the data into count. You are accumulating the count into the variable count. Similarly, similarly, uh, then after after that, once you have the count, uh, display the count, print count. So you can see this print count is there. After you have accumulated the count, as and when the data is coming, it will be displaying it. First round, 512 bytes came, uh, 5,120 bytes came. In the next round, again, 520 bytes came. So 520 plus 5,120, 5, 5,120, it will display how much count it is. So like that, it will keep reading bytes at a time and keep displaying you uh, how many bytes have come so far. Again, this is not compulsory. This is only for our understanding, for the programmer to know that how many bytes of data has been received. Okay. These are not important at all. These two things are not important at all. This is only for our reference, the programmer's reference that how much data is coming from the server. This is important. Once the data comes, put it into the variable picture and put it back into picture. Here, the data that is coming, you are accumulating it into the variable picture. Okay. First, we read the data into data variable. So when the data came, we found out what is the length. We added it to count, we displayed count. Then the actual data, we have to put it into the picture variable now. So we take that data, attach it to picture by doing picture plus data. Picture is a variable which we have declared on the top, you know, it is empty initially. So the empty picture plus first 5,120 bytes of data is added and then put it into picture. In the next round, picture contains already some data that you attach it with the new data and put it back into picture. So like this, the data is getting accumulated into the variable picture. It is getting accumulated into the variable picture. So all the bytes that is coming from the server, 5,120 bytes at a time, it's getting collected in the variable picture. It's getting attached in the variable picture. Once this all happens, once the entire data, at one time the server will stop sending you something. So the break will happen and then we come out of the loop. Once we come out of the loop, first thing what you do, close the connection, close the socket. So my socket dot close. Okay, my socket dot close. So what has happened so far? Till here, till here what has happened? Till here I have requested the image from the server. The image in binary format has come to me and then I have accumulated that into a variable called as picture. It is in the form of binary, remember that, okay? Now, now that it has come, now what I need to do is I need, yesterday you saw that when I, when I executed the program, when I executed the program you saw yesterday, that uh, along with the text data, there was some other information that was coming, the header information I told you, if you remember. Header information, HTTP, OK, 200, then uh, when was it last modified, well, all that was there along with the data that information also will be there definitely so in this file also in this data that has come back from the server with this image that header information will be there that header information will be there so you have to remove that header information you don't require that along with the file yesterday only it was for display along with the text so we displayed it but with the image we don't want that header information with the image we don't want that header information so we have to get rid of that we have to remove that we don't want that so to remove that from the image what we do is we do all this you can see that uh, you know that there is a little logic that we do here to remove that header information how do we do it is finally you know that in picture everything has come the header information and the picture information is there in picture so now in the picture i find for backslash and backslash and because remember that the header information data and the um, actual actual uh, text data it was separated by two lines it was separated by two lines i will run that i will run that program and i'll show it to you okay so you can see here that i go to the detail okay this is the program you saw i will execute this so you can see that my information only started from here, but soft was light through yonder's uh, window breaks. My actual data goes from here to here, okay, from here to here. Before this, all this information that you see, from here to here, from here to here, this is the header information. Lot of header information, HTTP 1.1, 200, okay, date, server, last modified, uh, you know, content length, a lot of things are there here. I am not interested in this header information. And then you saw that between the header information and the actual information, there is a new line here. There is a, there is a blank line. Always remember the difference. How do you differentiate between 
header information and the actual information, there is a blank line here. There's a blank line. So that is what I'm going to catch hold of. In the image also, I'm interested only in this information. I'm not interested in this other information. So my picture variable will contain everything from here to here. My picture information contains everything from here to here. I want to get rid of from here to here. I want to get it from here to here. I want to remove it. I don't want that. Okay. So what I do is I search for I search for a blank line. I search for a blank line in the data in picture. I know that before the blank line, it is everything header. After the blank line, it is everything image. So that is the logic that I use here. What I do is I find in picture I find for blank line. Okay, so you can see uh, find end of the header it says. Okay, a uh, two CR reference, two blank lines it says. So in the header, uh, I, in the picture variable that has the data, I find for a new line. I find for a new line. Two back two backslash end means a new line. Okay. Once I get that, what I get the position. I get the position of that two blank lines. Position in the sense we if it is a big string, then exactly at what point, at what index, the two blank lines are coming. That I come to know. After I come to know what is the blank line, then what I do is I yeah, this printing is not required. Don't worry about it right now. Immediately go for it. Picture is equals to picture, then I am interested in all the data. I am interested in all the data that is after the header, after the position. I am interested in the data that is after the header. So skip the header and save the picture data. So picture is equals to picture starting from position till the end. You know that if I write bracket like this and put a colon, you know that I will be able to slice. I will be able to slice my data starting from this index till last. If after the colon, if I don't write anything, till last it is. So I take the picture starting from the position. Why did I write plus four here? Because I know that I have to also include backslash n, backslash n also I have to include, so that's why I write plus four here. So picture, starting from this position, put a colon and then put a blank, because a blank, after the colon I don't write anything, which means that I want all the data till the end and put it back into picture. So this one statement is very, very important. This one statement, this one statement here is very, very important. Picture is equals to picture of position plus four, colon, etc. This is important and this line is important. Position is equal to fine from here to here. This, this line, and if you write this line, that is sufficient. You don't need to, I'm printing it here. I don't want to print this. So don't worry about this print. It's not required. So I find from where the new line is, I take the position, and then I take position from position till the end. I know it is pure picture. I put it into the variable picture. That's it. And then after that, what I do is I want to save this program. Okay. I want to save this program. So how to save it? You know that to save a pro to save something uh, as a file, then I have to open uh, stuff.jpg. Stuff.jpg. I open a file and then I open it for WB. WB is for um, writing uh, in the form of binary. WB is writing in the form of binary. So I open stuff.jpg. Call it as uh, open it in write in binary. And then f hand dot write picture. You know that picture contains byte information. So f hand and dot right picture at hand dot close. So, so this from here to here is the logic for opening a file, writing the data and saving it. And see, mind it, I'm saving it with the extension dot JPEG because I know the data that has come from there is a image. So I have to save it in the form of JPEG. So I open a file, I write the picture data into the file and I save it, that's it. So this is my program. Very quickly, I will explain this once again. I first open the connection by using the socket. Then after that, I send my request to cover3.jpg. The data comes, I have to keep reading it. I keep reading it. I keep reading it into the variable picture. Okay. Once I get all the details, once I get all the details, then I have to get rid of the header information. So for that, I do position is equals to picture find backslash n backslash n. After that, uh, create a new picture, excluding the header information. And then save, open the file, save it with extension .jpg, and then close the file. That's it. Okay. So what I will do now is, now you can see that I will execute this program.
Okay, so I've copied half of the program and copied the remaining half. Okay, I think this is done. So, this is my entire program. Yeah, in one frame, this is my entire program. I'll save this file, save, and I'll go to the command prompt here. I'll clear the screen first. First, I will go to that folder last 10 minutes remaining <clears throat> i'll go to that folder mmsc python module file and then you can see that in this folder i have two files here a simple browser this is the program that we did yesterday and this is the program that we wrote now get image and there is nothing else here okay, you don't see anything else here why i'm showing you this is because after the program has fetched the uh, image it will save it in this folder only okay so i have only two files here right now these are python files okay so now uh, I will run the program. I can get image.py, enter. So you can see that it is fetching the data. And then you can see that it is going step by step. You know why this is all happening? This is all happening because uh, why, why is it going step by step is because you know you have written that delay time time dot uh, sleep for 0.2 seconds no 0.25 seconds so that is why this is happening that's why you were able to see this step by step if i wouldn't have written that time dot sleep at once only everything would have come this is only for our reference slowly it is putting to show like that you know it's all there okay i think it has fetched the information uh, you can see that all this it did slowly and then every time it fetched 5100 and 20, 5,120 data items and keep adding it to the count, count, this is count, which is getting this date here. And this is the amount of data that is pulling. And then after that, it removed, it removed the header information. It removed the header information. From where to where you can see that it removed the header information. And it displayed me that header information because it contains that print function. You can see it displays print header length position and then print. See, it displayed me the header information. So I, in fact, don't require that. But finally, at the end, what I am interested in is to go back to my folder and then here you can see that a new image file has come. If I double click on that, yeah. so this is the actual image. This is that actual image, Python for everybody. This is the cover page of our textbook. The cover page of our textbook is this one. And this is kept on the server. This image is kept on the server. And using the Python program, we have pulled this JPEG file from the server and we have saved it to our hard disk. We have saved it to our hard disk. Hard disk to our D drive to our computer, we have saved it. The name of the file is stuff.jpg. We have saved it with that name. And you can see that it is this image. Simple. And if you want to verify whether it is this image only or no, or else we will do one more thing. I will show you one more thing. Okay. If I go to the browser here, uh, let us say Google, and sorry, I can say. Um, B gates. I'll put B gates. I'll just see image. So there are there are so many images here. Okay, there are so many images. Um, if I let us say I want to uh, pull this this particular image. Let's say I want to pull this particular image. This image I want to uh, pull from the server. So what I need to do is I need to know what is the address of this image. Now this is something which is out of the syllabus. Okay, please don't. Uh, uh, I'm showing something extra. So if I uh, copy image address, copy image address is there. So if I go here, if I go to my program, okay, if I go back to my program and I copy the image address, control V, I pasted it here so you can see. You can see that the address is there. 
So I will uh, type that address here instead of this cover.jpg. I will put Bill Gates address. Okay, I will put Bill Gates address. What I did was I replaced first what was there? First, this was there cover3.jpg. This was the thing. So if I replace it with if I replace it with this URL, Bill Gates. And then one more thing I need to change. I have to change even uh, the name of the server. If I take from here to here, control C, I have to even change this. Control V. Because that server was different and this server is different. Okay. So I changed even the server. I changed the uh, URL. And then I will save this file. Save. Okay. I saved it. Save the file. And then now a stuff.jpg file is already there. Okay. In my folder, stuff.jpg is already there, which is this file. I want to uh, change this to uh, bill, okay, bill.jpg, file, save. So the file which will be fetched from the server will be saved in your folder with the name bill.jpg, file, save. Now let us go to the program, and clear this, and then run the program once again. Python image, hopefully this should work, okay, and this should pull Bill Gates image. So it says that moved permanently get image.jpg. So this page is something. Let us go back and check whether it has pulled that. Yeah, build.jpg has come, but the Windows Photo Viewer can't open this file because file appears to be damaged or something like that. Why did this happen? The server also has to, the server should actually allow you to pull information from there. The previous server allowed you to pull the details of the uh, server uh, image, but I doubt whether this server, Britannica.com, this server actually allows you to pull the information from there or not. Okay. Uh, let us let us try one more thing. Okay, let us not go to this server. Don't worry about all this, okay? This is something which is really not there, but then um, I'm just showing you that it is not always uh, that you have to pull uh, this image only all the time, which we just now uh, pulled, you know, the stuff.jpg. You can pull any image that is available on the server. You just need to know what is the path of that image and on which server it is. That's it. If you know that, you have to just replace this program, okay? Write the a complete URL over here and then write the server name here. Automatically, that file will get downloaded. That file will get downloaded, okay? So that is what I just wanted to tell you people. But then here, there is some problem actually, okay? So I'll try this and then I'll get back on this, okay? So I'll go back to the program now. And show you. I hope this is all clear to you people. The program is clear that we open the connection to the server, put the data in the form of binary, then save it on the hard disk with the extension .jpg, and then you saw that it was able to pull that image file. Okay, so that's it. And this is important from your examination point of view. They will definitely ask you a question. They will ask you a question about uh, write a Python program to fetch uh, an image from the server. So you have to write this program only, okay? Entire program you have to write. Or they will ask you, demonstrate with the help of a Python program, how images can be downloaded from a server. So you have to write this program only, remember that, okay? So these programs are there with me already, I have told you that, so you can take it from me. Uh, I will upload it to my server, then I will share a link with you guys, so that you can completely download the entire programs that I have written here, okay? So we'll stop here today now, okay, we'll stop here. And then uh, tomorrow again, I will continue. So what is there after this? After image, then uh, uh, yeah, then there is a, a class called as URLib. Tomorrow we will be doing this URLib. Very easy and very important. Very, very easy. 
In fact, all my Python projects that I do, I do it using URL remote. And it is extremely simple. Now, before this, you saw how to pull information from the server by using socket. You have to open a socket, you have to give uh, domain name, server name, port, and all that. But using URL, you see, have only two lines of code, only two, three lines. This is the entire program. If you want to uh, fetch Romeo.txt file from the server, these are the only lines that you have to write. That's it. First, import this library, and then using this library, request this uh, thing. It will come into file and finish. That's it. Only two lines of code to pull information from the server. So this is a simple browser example. This is the same simple browser example, but using a different library. The library is URL lib, URL library. This is the library. This we'll be doing it tomorrow. Okay. So we we'll stop here now. Okay. And attend all the classes, all of you.